announcement today by the U.S. ambassador to Colombia that a major cocaine factory had been shut down in his country contained what seemed like a record number of superlatives. But any record set in that area was overshadowed by the record set in the drug bust itself. Bob Simon in New York narrates our report. It was the biggest bust anywhere, anytime. 13 tons of cocaine from the jungles of Colombia worth $1.2 billion in the streets of the United States. The Drug Enforcement Agency in Washington called the operation mind-boggling. Airborne Colombian police, accompanied by a U.S. narcotics agent, began the raid 10 days ago. They encountered fierce resistance when they hit the ground. When it was all over, they had 11 bodies to show journalists, and they had arrested 40 people, including including an American pilot. They also had documents incriminating officials in the Colombian government. The camp was in the deepest Colombian jungles, 700 miles south of Bogota, and it was a complete community, a cocaine community. With five runways equipped for night landings, a power plant, sophisticated communications, a very impressive arsenal, even livestock. The U.S. Embassy says it was all under the protection of the armed wing of the Colombian Communist Party. 13 tons represents 25% of all the cocaine consumed in the United States in one year. In the words of the DEA, it won't affect the street price right away, but it will put a definite crimp in the cocaine.
7th of September 1984, helicopter overflights of the San Miguel River indicated the presence of a large number of cocoa plant cultivations. Extensive cocoa cultivations on both the Ecuadorian and Colombian sides of the river were observed. Based on these overflights, part of which you are seeing here, an operation was planned to destroy the cocoa plantations on the Ecuadorian side of the San Miguel River, where it forms the northeastern border of Ecuador. Operation Santiago resulted in the destruction of over 100,000 mature cocoa plants found on only 30 hectares of land. In addition to the plant destruction, one cocoa-based laboratories were discovered and destroyed. One cook and lab operator was arrested. Two others fled into Colombia and their extradition has been requested by the Ecuadorian authorities. Embarkation from Punta San Miguel. This is the center of the coca traffic from Colombia and Ecuador. This is also the major marketplace for the coca paste and base produced in Ecuador for the sale to the Colombian cocaine hydrochloride lab operators. Here, one kilo of coca paste sells for approximately 100,000 sucres or $1,000, and coca base, 350,000 sucres or $3,500. disembarking to invade the first clandestine laboratory. Plantation and laboratory owner. We're now one hour down the river in contact with helicopter. We locate the first cocoa paste and base lab where both were being processed. Here we have the basic living quarters and evidence that the workers departed in a hurry, leaving pots and other cooking items still on the fire. This is what, Tommy? Second laboratory and equipment used in operation. And it's uh, located maybe half a mile from the last one. It's been like this all day. There's uh, gasoline, bicarbonate of soda, acetone, a little bit of finished base in a white bowl over there with a spoon, scale, balance. You don't see me eat it. Other agents arriving by their helicopter to visit the lab. Previous day, while in the process of manufacturing the coca paste, when given the opportunity, he agreed to continue his process for the camera. The following is one of many different chemical processes utilized to produce coca paste from coca leaves. Here, the chemist mixes light soda ash with the green coca leaves and finally chops the leaves. Tigre, 
the leaf and soda ash mixture is then mixed with gasoline or kerosene and allowed to stand for approximately four hours or until the coca leaves turn completely black. The leaves are then prepped, the liquid is removed. The liquid contains the coca alkaloid. <laughs> Chill the process. A mixture of light soda ash, gasoline, and sulfuric acid is added to the liquid containing the coca alkaloid. Here the chemist adds sulfuric acid to his mixture. According to the chemist, his sense of taste in this process has been developed over 20 years of processing coca paste. Yeah. is then added to the liquid containing the coca alkaloid and stirred vigorously for approximately 20 minutes. After having mixed the liquid thoroughly, the chemist allows it to stand until a precipitant is formed. In this case, approximately 20 to 25 minutes. The chemist then removes approximately 75 to 80 percent of the gasoline kerosene mixture very carefully without disturbing the, uh, the barrel. The gasoline kerosene of the insane gasoline mixture is poured off without losing the precipitant. Here you can see the precipitant in the bottom of the barrel. Approximately two gallons of liquid is left in the bottom of the barrel with the precipitant. The remaining liquid is now siphoned off. siphoned off is again mixed with soda ash to the chemist's taste. The chemist now calls for a cloth filter. Okay. 
Écheme le soda ese balde. Sí, soda, soda, un puñadito de soda y lo lava. Que no se, se revuelque esa gasolina con esto. Sí, sí, écheme le soda. Un puñado. Sí, no se puede, no se puede trabajar más. The chemist requests that his son clean one of the plastic containers with soda ash and fresh creek water. The mixture of liquid and soda ash is now filtered into a clean container. The liquid is wrung from the residue remaining from the filter process. The paste substance, it's used locally combined with tobacco and has a very low coca base content. This chemist prefers to reincorporate this material and produce a higher quality coca paste. Here the chemist mixes flesh again with...